Could the Chicago Bears trade for superstar edge rusher Micah Parsons? That is a big topic here on Chicago Bears. Now, my name is Harrison Graham. We'll dive into that. Plus, Caleb Williams clapping back at the haters. We got that as well. But before we get into all of it, help us out. We would appreciate it. We're trying to get to 91,000 subscribers here on Bears Now by Chat Sports. The road to 100K is here, and we're only 142 away from our next milestone of 91. Thousand. If you want Bears content for free on the daily, we got you covered. Hit that sub button right now. Is Micah Parsons on the move? Report out of Dallas is that he is quote worn thin in or with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, does that mean they're trying to get him out of there? Who knows? Let me read the quote from Sean Sharif, a sports talk radio host in Dallas, 105.3 The Fan. He says, Quote, I've heard from way too many people this offseason. I'm talking about at least four different people have told me that Micah has worn thin there. I don't know how much is true and how much of it actually hurts his reputation. I don't know whether this is the behavior uh, of a typical superstar. I don't know how damaging it is. But I do know is this. I've heard from way too many people that if Micah Parsons was out of there, there would be a decent amount of people inside the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco smiling or breathing a sigh of relief. Now, a couple things here. One, Micah Parsons is an incredible player and talent. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Two, a lot of that quote is, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but he kind of probably has what a lot of superstars is, is that diva attitude. He's got side hustles. He's got his podcast. He's been criticized for that of, oh, you're more worried about your podcast than your on-field reputation and this and that. Uh, who knows? But I know this. Uh, the guy is unbelievable on Sundays. Now, in his couple of playoff games he's played with Dallas, he hasn't played as well, and that's certainly up for criticism if you want to go that route. But through three years – this guy has, what, 40 and a half sacks? I mean, uh, he's been an incredible player. He's a guy that can play off ball occasionally if you need him to as well. He's an absolute game wrecker. And what have we talked about a lot? This defensive line is one dude away. And Micah Parsons is a dude. You've got Montez Sweat. You brought him in here. You paid him. You're hoping a guy like Javon Dexter takes a jump. But you don't really have that other guy. And with Micah... He would actually be your best guy. I love Montez Sweat, but Micah Parsons is a better pass rusher. Now, luckily, it would be an ideal fit because then Sweat uh, can go back to being that dominant edge rusher while still pro providing pass rush ability. Um, man, you think about what this guy's impact could be. Just, you know, just go into kind of your crystal ball and kind of just look ahead of if this somehow happened. Like, this defense with Matt Eberflus would be an undisputed – undisputed top five unit in the NFL. It's already a top 10 defense, maybe even top five. It certainly finished like a top five unit last year. You add Micah Parsons and his game-breaking ability to it, good luck. There's really no weaknesses on any of the three levels of the Bears defense if they add another high-level, impactful defensive lineman, which Micah Parsons absolutely is. Now, coming up in a moment, we'll explore Micah Parsons' trade value. I've got a trade idea, plus comparing it to a trade we are all familiar with as Bears fans. And is he worth it? Does it make sense for Ryan Poles to make this move at this point in time if he's available? We'll dive into that as well. Now, I want to hear from you guys first on that topic. Should the Bears trade for Micah Parsons? Type T for trade, or you can type P for pass. After this YouTube ad break, we will explore his trade value, his remaining contract, and whether or not he's worth taking a swing on. You look at his remaining contract here with Dallas. Uh, former first-round pick. He's entering year four, so this year he's making about $5.3 million bucks. I think if the Bears traded for him, he'd uh, be like a three or something million dollar cap hit. He was one pick behind Justin Fields, so very similar cap implications there. Fifth-year option, which hasn't been picked up yet, but will obviously if he's not extended uh, right away. Uh, $21.3 million, which for what he provides, I mean, that's about $3 million less than Montez Sweat per year. That's a pretty damn good deal. And then, of course, as of now, he is ex uh, slated to hit free agency in 2026, assuming that fifth year is picked up, which it absolutely will. It's a compelling thought, man. I mean, it really, really is. And, you know, obviously you got to factor in what you would pay, uh, have to pay him and the compensation and this and that. Uh, I talked to our Cowboys report host, Tom Downey. does a great job over there covering the Cowboys for us here at Chat Sports. I said, what do you think Mikey goes for in a trade? And he said, I think the Khalil Mack trade is probably 
uh, the type of range you're talking about. So let's revisit that trade. Uh, and I'm, the first one, not the one that sent him to the Chargers. Lil Mack to Chicago for a, uh, plus a second round pick, which turned into Cole Komet, nice, and a seventh, which turned into Arlington Hambright. Two firsts to the Raiders, a sixth and a third. So four picks to Vegas, uh, Oakland at the time, and two picks in Mack back to the Bears. So I didn't do an exact trade here, but something in the ballpark here. Here's what I threw to Dallas. And remember, while it seems like a little less than that other one, First round pick, the Cowboys already know it would be top 10. Number nine overall, number 75 overall, so two top 75 picks, and the Bears first next year for Parsons and a second this year. So essentially, you're, you're moving up from the third to second, uh, so you could still go get a receiver, whatever you want to go get there with 56, um, and you're trading two firsts. I mean, that's, that's kind of what you're talking about there. Take it or leave it. Maybe I'd throw a future you know, third or fourth in there as well. Uh, but uh, I would do. I think I would do this trade, man. What do you guys think? Would you make this deal? Type Y for yes or type N for no. You still get a second round pick. You still have your number one overall pick. Let me know down in the comment section below what you make of this trade. Would you do it? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Before we continue, let's talk about our sponsor here on today's show. That is Prize. Picks. The month of April is here, which means Major League Baseball is underway. Action is heating up on the hardwood and on the ice as the NBA playoffs and NHL playoffs are about to get underway as well. And uh, listen, Chicago sports are right in the middle of it all. Get in on the fun action today at pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. That'll get you a deposit match up to $100 when you sign up. You pick more, you pick less. That's how prize picks works. Two to six player entries. I got a little two player entry in the NBA tonight. Keeping it simple. 10 to win 30 bucks here. Three times my entry here. Uh, I like the more on points, rebounds, and assists for Chet Holmgren. 26 and a half tonight. He's been very good this year. And then Cleveland's got an important game tonight. They're still jockeying for seeding in the Eastern Conference. Uh, I think Darius, Darius Garland can grab me three rebounds. Give me the more on that as well. 10 to win 30, 20 to win 60, however much you put in on that entry, you get three times your entry. It takes less than 90 seconds to sign up. It takes less than 60 seconds to launch uh, any given entries. You can do multiple entries per night, as many as you want. You can cross over sports. You got UFC as well, eSports, tons of stuff available, whatever uh, kind of tickles your fancy in that regard. PrizePicks.com slash CLNS, code CLNS for a deposit match up to 100 bucks. Link is in the comments and in the description. Get going with prize picks today. It's daily fantasy made easy. So my only question is this when it comes to trading for Micah Parsons, and this would be one that you'd have to discuss as a staff with Ryan Poles. If you trade for Micah, you're going to have to pay him more than $30 million per year. Now, you don't have to do it now. You've got this year. You've got the fifth-year option next year, but you don't want to do it sooner rather than later because the longer you wait, the more the price goes up. We know how this works. Does Poles want to do that? He's already allocated $25 million per year for Montez Sweat. Um, the reason I would advocate for yes is because I think there are three primary way reasons teams win in the NFL. Number one, you have to have an elite quarterback. That's what we're hoping Caleb Williams is going to be. Number two, you have to protect that quarterback. That's why there's been talk of maybe upgrading from Braxton Jones at left tackle. And number three, you have to go get the opposing quarterbacks. In other words, put pressure on him, sack him. That is what Micah Parsons does. So, look, maybe there's distractions there. Maybe there's things that aren't perfect in terms of how he would fit in. But I haven't heard anything super major. If he became available, you can count me interested. Now, I don't think that's going to happen right now. I doubt it happens between now and the draft. I could see it happening next offseason, though, or potentially even at the trade deadline if things are going poorly in Dallas because – Sounds like they're playing this year out with Dak Prescott without an extension. Jerry Jones says this is kind of a you know prove-it year for Dallas. So who knows? I mean, uh, Dallas could be on the brink of a blow-up. You never know what's going to happen down there. So uh, if at some point Micah Parsons is available, uh, yes, uh, I am absolutely interested in a player of that caliber. All right, let's shift gears to Caleb Williams here. He's clapping back at uh, another hater that's emerged here. Not a hater, but just kind of a – Bizarre take from Greg McElroy. He took issue with what he had to say here. Former Alabama quarterback and now does uh, ESPN College Football Analysis. He's also on, I think, Cowherd's The Volume Network. Uh, here's Greg McElroy. 
Quote, Caleb Williams has never experienced adversity. I do wonder, is there a sense of entitlement? Is there that chip on a shoulder that's going to keep him going 10 to 12 years down the road the way it does with Mahomes? Ah, yes. Greg McElroy, so much adversity in his life. He grew up in affluent South Lake Carroll. He went to Alabama, got to start at quarterback there, and wasn't even asked to do that much. He was just a game manager, just handed the ball off to Mark Ingram. This dude went 6 for 13 in a national championship game and threw for 58 yards and won the game. I mean, if anybody knows adversity, it's Greg McElroy. I, I just I don't get this take. I don't get some of these like th- these ideas that these analysts throw out there. And I, I actually like a lot of Greg McElroy's college football work, but like this just seems lazy to me. And so Caleb Williams is like, okay, I'm bored. Uh, let's you know, let's tweet. He tweets out the definition of adversity, a state of instance or of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune. He talks about how his first year he wasn't the starter. He had to you know, wait his turn, and he took over for Spencer Rattler while te- Oklahoma was getting blown out by Texas. He led that comeback. I'd say that's battling through adversity. Uh, talked about popping his hamstring in the Pac-12 championship game in 2022. I remember that. Uh, couldn't move in that game, so uh, he had to fight through that game. Played pretty well, by the way. Uh, and then he talked about, hey, I learned a lot last year. Going 7-5, and five, he's never been a guy that's lost a lot of football games. And at USC, they didn't have the year he t- had to win. I'll add another one for him, by the way. His senior year of high school football wiped out due to COVID. Like, kids who were seniors in high school when COVID hit, I have a, uh, my sister-in-law was that age. She was a sister in high school, didn't get to go to her prom, didn't get to experience graduation, all that stuff. That's adversity, man. That is, talk about your life being thrown upside down as an 18-year-old. And this guy, all he does, despite not playing his senior year in high school, is he comes into the Red River rivalry getting blown out and he leads a comeback against Texas. That's battling through adversity, man. So the kid ain't backing down. I like him backing himself. And uh, I I just remember this, being at the NFL Combine uh, a couple of months ago and listening to him at the podium. And this quote really stood out to me. Take a listen. The main thing that I've, you know, if they they ask me or if it comes up, the main thing that I've said, I want to go to a place that wants to win. Um, A whole, a whole, you know, 360. So I mean, in the, from the top, all the way to you know the guys, um, and 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 down to the down to the the, the janitors, the people that um, you know that, that that you know make everything run. Um, you know, it's just everybody wants to win. Everybody's a part of that, and 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 you know we all take care of each other. Now you, know, you they, could say talk is cheap, and this and that actions speak louder than words, and they absolutely do. But does that sound like a kid who's entitled? That sounds like a guy who wants to galvanize a franchise and wants to win. I mean, that's that's what it sounds like to me, and. I also remember him being asked, what do you want to know about the Chicago Bears? He said, do you want to win? Yes or no? A few weeks later, they traded for Keenan Allen. I think this team wants to win. So he sounds motivated. Doesn't sound entitled to me. Doesn't mean he hasn't had some privileges. His parents put him in a really good situation, and you know they, they looked around at different private high schools to put him in a different situation to succeed, and his dad was getting up with him at 5 a.m., helping him train. Like, yeah, guess what? The kid took advantage of it, and now he's going to be the number one overall pick in the NFL draft. So... Uh, I, I think it's a lazy take by McElroy, and uh, I'm glad that Caleb Williams called him out. Do you believe in Caleb Williams? Type B for believe or D for don't. Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 91,000 subscribers. Sooner rather than later, we would appreciate it if you hit that sub button right now. Until next time, bear down. Bear down.